welcome to this lecture on anatomy of figures and tables. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to present your data using good figures and tables. Before we learn about how to make good figures, first let us look at a bad figure. Now, consider the plot which is shown on the left hand side of the slide. This is an example of a bad figure and the figure which is shown on the right hand side of this slide is an example of a good figure. Now, let us look at the problems with the bad figures. First problem which you will notice that the person who has drawn this curve has not chosen the appropriate axis and origin and as a result of that the almost half of the area of the graph is empty. So, that means this graph is not utilizing the entire space which is available to it. The second problem which you will notice that there are not enough number of tick marks. Therefore, it is very hard to find out the values corresponding to each data point from the plot. The third problem is that the legends are missing. In this case, clearly you can see there are two curves, but the plot does not say whether these two curves are for two different sets of measurement or what is the distinction between these two sets of curves. The curve which is shown on the right hand side is an example of a good figure. In this case, the person has chosen the appropriate origin, origin in is not 0, 0 and therefore, it is utilizing the entire space which is available and then there are enough number of major tick marks and then there are enough number of minor tick marks and the legends have been shown. So, in this case it is clearly shown that the blue curve corresponds to the 25 millimole of ATP and the orange curve corresponds to 50 millimole of ATP. This is an example of a good figure. So, in a good figure you have to first choose the x axis and y axis and you have to put the labels for the axis, you have to define your origin and then you have to use different types of symbols for different types of data points. You have to put the legends for each of these different sets of measurement. For example, the blue curve shows the measurement for R c is equal to 4, the orange one shows the measurement for R c is equal to 6 and the gray one shows the measurement for R c is equal to 8. And then there are major tick marks which have been numbered and then there are minor tick marks which are not numbers. The important thing to remember is that do not use the figures unnecessarily because if you are using the figures they are going to occupy the space in the manuscript which you are writing and you might have to pay the publication charge and if there are too many figures then you have to pay a lot of publication charges and therefore, they are costly. And you should especially avoid the figures when you can describe your results using a simple text. For example, let us say you have made a measurement and you found that the dependence of a variable is linear with temperature, then in that case you do not have to necessarily put that plot into your manuscript. You can simply say that we measure the dependence of this variable on temperature and we found the relationship to be a linear one. So, important thing is thing to remember that if the curve is a trivial one and you can describe your result using a simple one line text, do not use the figures because they occupy the space and they are costly. This example of another figure where a particular data set has been shown using bar chart. So, you find different categories on the x axis and then the percentage is shown on the y axis, the labels for x axis and y axis are there and then the figure captions are given at the bottom of the figure and in this case the error bars for the measurements have been also shown. So, error bars can be standard deviation, standard error or confidence interval and we will learn about them in one of the lectures. This example of a good table. So, if you are making a table then you have to put column title for each of the columns, you have to use the lines to demarcate different parts of the table and you have to put the data in the body of the table. If there are some data points which require explanation, then you have to put those explanations in the footnote and you have to also write the caption which is generally at the bottom. Again the important thing to remember is that you should use figure rather than table if you can convey the same information to your readers using the figures, because figures give you a visual impression of the data and people like to see the figures. The problem with the table is that table has a bunch of numbers and therefore, it takes a lot of space and does not give you a visual impression of the data. So, it is always a good idea to use 
the figures if you can convey the same information to your readers using the tables. On this slide I have shown how to properly use a graph paper, whenever you are using graph paper you have to first put the title of the graph to show what this graph represents. In this case, this graph shows the deflection as a function of resistance. The important things to remember is that you have to leave the margin on both sides before you draw the axis, so that you can put the axis labels on x axis and y axis. And once you have put all the data points, you have to draw the curves as an average path between the data points. That means, it has to be a qualitative best fit. You have to also put the scale in a box to represent what 1 centimeter corresponds to on x axis and what 1 centimeter corresponds to on y axis. If you have to calculate the slope, then you should be using the large part of the straight line to calculate the slope. Now, we are going to learn about the misleading graphs. The idea is to tell you how to avoid the misleading graph. For example, in this case, somebody has shown the data using a 2D pie chart and a 3D pie chart. In the 2D pie chart, you see that the proportion of the item C is 5 percent and the proportion of item A is 11 percent. However, if the same pie chart is shown in 3D with a perspective, then in that case what you see that the proportion of item C, although it is 5 percent, appears equal to the item A which was 11 percent and therefore, this is a example of a misleading pie chart and therefore, you should avoid this kind of representation. Another example of a misleading graph where somebody has truncated the bar chart. So, whenever you are making the bar chart, you have to show the bars right from the beginning and you should not be truncating the axis, because if you truncate the axis, what happens in that case, the difference edge which could be very minor for the actual graph can look very, very different in the case of a truncated graph. Now, this is an example of another misleading graph by changing the ratio of graph dimension. So, the figure on the top shows the original graph and the figure at the left bottom is example of a misleading graph, where the graph has been scaled down by a factor of half for its width and has been scaled up by a factor of 2 for its height. So, the slope of the graph appears different from the original graph. Similarly, in the graph which is at the bottom right hand side, in this case the width of the graph has been scaled up by a factor of 2 and height of the graph has been scaled down by a factor of 2 and therefore, the slope of the graph looks smaller than the original graph and therefore, you should avoid changing the ratio of the graph dimensions. Thank you very much for your attention.